Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So hopefully you did the in-game update for 2.11.500, and if you did, um, this morning's, uh, I guess, um, inbox should have delivered something pretty special. A thousand free Chronostones is a one-time links delivery service for the fifth anniversary of the JP release of Another Eden. We also do get increased login bonuses of 100 stones uh, for every day for a month, essentially. Now, that being said, what we're here for, of course, is um, our newest episode of Should You Summon. So in tonight's episode of Should You Summon, we're going to talk about the um, two banners available, actually three banners available. We have the Encounter Across Time Layers Violet Lancer, and that is the Fateful there's also the Epoch Fateful, which is both two times max. And finally, the two uh, both free or paid stones banners. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So first off, I'll talk about the Epoch Edition, and then I'll talk more in detail about the featured unit, aka Violent Lancer. So... Um, one of the good things about a lot of these Alter units is that these uh, specialized Faithful Encounters um, group together some of the most powerful units in the game, and a lot of them are newer as well. And so this one has 10 different units. Your 10th encounter for the Faithful, which does require a thousand paid stones or your Heavens subscription ticket, guarantees one of the following. And so we did see a glimpse of this yesterday, Violet Lancer, of course, and you also have Iska ES, Kikyo AS, Hardy AS, Melody, Sukiya AS, um, the other three Alter units, and finally Chio AS. Now that being said, um, I guess in terms of how you would value this particular banner, keep in mind that if you are going for Violet Lancer and you like at least some of these units, this one is actually a much better value than, for example, the uh, Faithful Encounter here. And I'll just quickly show you that. This one is 0.8% of the Violet Lancer, 10% flat chance on the 10th encounter, same um, mix of bots, Rainbow Sisters, and um, you know, those kind of knights and so on and so forth. However, the advantage of the normal Fateful over the Epoch Fateful is that the normal one can actually spook you with other units other than those 10 on pull 10. Whereas this one, pulls 1 to 9, you can still get all the different five stars. However, on pull 10, it only guarantees one of the following 10. So you have to, if you are spending some stones and obviously you can buy a 4K package and use 2K here and 2K in the other one, then you can kind of spread out your value. And just like before, all Fatefuls um, do have up-to-date units. So Flame Lapis or Flam Lapis or Flamel Lapis, however you want to say it, is on this banner. That's the most recent banner. Um, of course, also AS Mysteria is there, Pluma Diana, and so on and so forth, Eva, blah, 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 blah. And again, three and a half, fours, Rainbow Sisters, Bots, and Knights. All right, so quickly here on the Epoch Condition, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, I think Melody is really, um, unfortunately for those who like her, I would say she's probably the worst of the 10 to go for. AS Chio is still very much meta. I use her on my high-end Magic Zone team. Now, the downside of AS Chio is not because she's not great. She is exceptionally good, both as a Magic Zone setter and an Earth Zone setter, depending on the composition of your team. However, the thing is, she only comes as a 3.5 and, and 4 star normally. And if you've been playing the game and able to grind out keys, um, that is, you're at least in the early end game where you get quite a few rewards as the uh, end rewards with either 120 light or 120 shadow on your dungeons in the very hard red keys. Or if you're even that farther ahead and you're doing Garalia or Underworld dungeons where you can get some reward lines, Treaty Seeds for AS Chio will drop. And if you grind it out, I've said this many times, usually within three to six months, you will have a enough Treaty Seas codexes to upgrade a unit from 4.5 to 5. And so AS2, although very valuable, you probably can get her relatively, I'll say for free, with some work and grinding if you have enough reward lines unlocked by having a team of 120 or more Light or Shadow. In the case of the other units, all the Alter units are actually pretty hard to get generally. Um, they did have specialized banners that had 1% flat chance. However, you know, many of us probably didn't 
get a chance to pull for them. And so this one does give you a 10% chance of getting them. And so if you had used Fatefuls in the past and missed one or more of the previous three, you do get another round of two shots of getting those. And so there is extra value there for you. Not only that, Opuses are extremely hard to come by. They only come from red key grinding and they drop as a 0.1% chance. So yeah, not that easy to grind out, not three to six months, probably four to eight months, if not longer. And so if you are looking for some extra chances of getting any alter units, this is a great banner for you. Let's round out the ES um, Sukiya, ES Iska, ES Hardy, ES Kiko, all high end units. Um, ES Hardy is another flash strike stance. Um, ES Sukiya is a top lined wind pierce zone setter with high end DPS. ES Iska, great shielding barrier, relatively new unit, so very high end power uh, with some defensive and some offensive capability. And finally, ES Kikyo, extremely high end wind DPS for Slash, probably one of the top wind DPS currently in the game. So, yeah. Not much else to say here. If you are looking for Violent Lancer and having some bonus 5 stars on the side, very much worth the value, although you do have a couple of bummers in terms of potentially hitting a Melody or AS Chio. Same with this one. If you do like, um, you know, Violet Lancer, of course you can gamble on the 10% uh, chance times two. Now more about Violet Lancer in general before I talk about these two free ones, okay? Now Violet Lancer, I've been thinking about her over the last kind of couple of days and kind of bouncing some ideas off uh, my friend who also plays the game to see what he thinks about it. Now, first of all, she is another Earth Zone setter. She kind of specializes in powering up both Luring Shadow units and Earth units, obviously. She also does have another zone because she is an Alter unit, which actually increases damage against um, enemies higher level than you. So a lot of super bosses and stuff like that, you're going to get some extra damage up to two times depending on um, how difficult they are. Not only that though, she does have dual debuff down in luring shadow teams. So in enemies who, uh, I mean for team members who are shadow type, you'll get a dual shield 30-30, which is kind of like Nokoko, very, very useful that way. Um, she can generate a lot of damage while in another zone. However, outside another zone, her damage does drop off significantly, uh, such that it's a little bit weaker than some other units that are in regular zones, so to speak. But that being said, she can really support some Luring Shadow team. She still does set Earth team, uh, Earth zone, and she does have the end of turn effects for, um, depending on number of Earth attacks done, then you'll get up to 60% or 15% per move increased Earth type attack for your team. So really does help boost your Earth type teams. Now, the downside to this, because some of her moves boost um, units based on not only Luring Shadow, you are limited in the number of Luring Shadow units you're going to bring here because if you're bringing light units, then those Earth Light units aren't going to benefit completely from her, aka things like um, AS uh, Myris, AS Chio, if you wanted a dual Earth Zone setting. They won't get that extra benefit from the shielding from Luring Shadow units or max HP bonuses from that. Now, if you're talking about um, bonuses on uh, units that are of the Pierce variety, because she does increase bow and lance damage by up to 30% with her top move. How many Earth Shadow, we're talking Earth Shadow units are there in the game that are also Pierce? Milsha comes to mind. She does have Earth. Um, I think there is, um, I think there's one other one, but you know, you're starting now to kind of like play around where you're maybe able to add either Luring Shadow units, which can be top line, or Earth units that are top line, but they don't get all the benefits because a lot of the top end Earth type units, they are light units because there's a lot more light units than Luring Shadow. And in terms of the top Earth Pierce units, you have like AS Seal, for example, as another high end DPS. AS Tiramisu, which is also a light unit. These are not going to benefit from the Luring Shadow. Not only that, but if you're talking Earth teams in general, I would argue that an Earth Pierce team that is a team built completely with Earth Pierce units would probably be much harder to form as opposed to the, my opinion of um, the top Earth teams out there. You've seen my Earth Magic team in action and it's really, really synergistic. You got the Clark, you got the AS Chio and obviously uh, AS Myers and so, so forth. You also have Earth Blunt, you got AS uh, Mufa, you got AS Tsubame and then round out whatever kind of units you need for 
um, to round out your team for defense. You got Yi Fan and so on and so forth to help with the shielding, all the uh, debuffs, and so on and so forth. And finally, if you really want to go Earth Slash, you can do that. You've got Nikoko. You can get free units such as Deidre, and and there's also high end units such as um alt. I think I guess uh, um, uh, I guess uh, Alter Iska. These are all like really really good things. And so I would say of uh, in terms of purely as a zone and kind of support, she's a kind of jack of all trades where she does have a lot of un interesting and powerful moves. It just doesn't feel that you can draw out the maximum benefit and synergy um, with the current roster or current units available in the game. So that's just my opinion. Um, that being said, she is pretty hot. She's waifu material for a lot of you. So hey, 10 out of 10 if you're going to rate her that way and summon for her. And again, not bad at all. She actually has some pretty good kit moves uh, that I mentioned. Like I said, dual shielding, uh, increased HP max, high end DPS, um, increased damage against um, high level bosses and so on and so forth. But I just feel that I would probably not be able to fit her on a team. I would probably use a much more synergized team such as Earth Magic or Earth Blunt uh, if the enemy is weak to Earth. And if the enemy is weak to Pierce, for example, I would argue that Wind Pierce or Water Pierce teams would probably do the job. I mean, you have a lot of synergy there. you got the AS Foreign, AS Sheila, uh, AS Hismina, for example, on your Water Pierce, Yukino, for example. You also have for Wind, True Manifest, Suzette. Um, obviously, you have... Um, ES to Kia, which is a top line unit as well. So, um, yeah, so good. But if you're low on stones and you're wondering whether or not she's a must have, I would argue no. All right. So, that being said, the Pierce Force Edition includes Suza AS, Violet Lancer, um, Tiramisu AS, and Bertrand. And I'm going to be honest, I don't feel this one is much value. Bertrand is just a normal style. As a tank, he is dare I say inferior to Garen Barrow, which is also featured in the Flam Lapis banner. He also has an AS and you're not even getting the AS out of it. So you're losing value in that sense as well. AS Tiramisu is another Earth Zone Setter. So technically this banner does have 1% times 2 Earth Zone Setter. So if you really desperately need an Earth Zone, hey, not bad. You can actually get that and that will help round out your Earth Zone team as needed. However, I would find that AS Tiramisu, I mean, not that I have her, but I could side grade for her. As you well know, I have so many copies of Tiramisu, and I haven't found a need to do so because the other Earth teams I mentioned earlier was more than uh, capable of handling anything weak to Earth. And finally, AS Suzette. AS Suzette is very good still. The problem is, True Manifest Normal Suzette style is actually more powerful currently anyways. And so if you got AS Suzette, you're going to have to pay 5 chance to side grade to normal style Suzette in order to get the manifest. And for people who are relatively new to the game or don't have a lot of chance, that's going to be painful. So not recommended. Although, like I said, if you find a niche where you need some of these units, go ahead. Now, in terms of the Earth Force, same idea. We're looking at Violet Lancer as our prize if we do need her. Elga, Subame, and AS Nagi. Quickly speaking, AS Nagi would be the prize out of the three of these if you even need her. Um, she does have a new manifest released in Japan and that actually brings her back to the top of the food chain in terms of Earth slash DPS. She does tremendous amounts of damage. However, currently not really used in any teams right now. Not only that, Tsubami normal style is just not the same as AS Tsubami. Now keep in mind that normal style Tsubami does have a manifest eventually. I'm sure they'll release one. But as it stands, you're now going to have to pay Chance and Treaty Seeds to side grade to Tsubami AS, which is a superior unit at the moment. That's going to be costly, for, especially for a banner you're already using stones to fun summon. And finally, Elga Normal Style was good at one point. She was one of the top non-elemental slash units in the game. There are a lot more free slash units out there that can do significant amounts of non-elemental damage. And if you're using her for Earth DPS, I would argue other Earth slash units are much better. So again, a pass. If you really have to go for Violet Lancer and you needed um, one of these two banners to do it, probably the Pierce one is marginally better. Um, although, like I said, with any banner in general, you're only going to be summoning if you're missing most, if not all of the featured units. Otherwise, you might be disappointed in hitting uh, unfortunate dupe. All right, so 
I apologize for talking so long about that. This is going to be a longer video because there's just a lot of things to cover. And finally, Star Dream. I know that everyone's wondering about the SDE. What does Gamer Dad think about the SDE and, and, and is he going to use it? And of course, staying free to play, not using the SDE. SDE is the best value in the game. New, moderate, end game, late game, veteran. At any stage of the game, if you're willing to pay a thousand stones or a ticket, must buy 10 out of 10 or 15 out of 10, 100 out of 10 banner, must get. The reason for that is, you summon with a thousand stones, you get your normal odds, including Flam Lapis, Eva, all the awesome units out there, uh, AS Mystere. But at the end of that, you get a free unit, a free Star Dream piece, which you can select any unit, any five star unit out there. And I believe it's up to, um, should be up to this banner. Let's take a look at the bottom. Yes, you can now select Flam Lapis in this banner. Eva, uh, Pisica, blah, 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 blah. Everything is in here. So you're essentially using a thousand paid stones to guarantee you any unit in the game you want. And if you happen to luck out on some other units, that is great. So must buy if you're willing to spend stones. Now, again, um, I'm going to drone on a little bit here. Who should you pick with your Star Dream Encounter? These are the things that everyone always asks. Now, the last time a Star Dream Encounter came out, I had recommended, I believe in no particular order, is either Pisica or Melissa. And then we talked about tier two or secondary units. You may still want to fill out rosters. And then finally, either waifu material or just niche units that you need for rounding out your team to push you over the top. Now, Again, this is going to be controversial for some, so um, take it with a grain of salt. This is only Gamer's Dad's opinion, and so um, feel free to disagree with my Star Dream choices. Without knowing anything about your roster, this is how I would draft a Star Dream currently. If you do not have... Um, I guess my top three choices would be Pisica, Eva, and Melissa... And then I'll talk about why, and then I'll talk about the next tier of units I would recommend going for. So, we're looking for units with our Star Dream to last us into the future, long into the future for money you're paying. And so if you're going to do that, you're going to have to draft or choose a unit that will be fitting in almost every team, most teams, or most situations in the game to make your life either easier for, you know, both farming, boss, super boss, storyline, and just coolness factor as well. And if you're going that route, depending on your playstyle, you're going to choose one of the first three. Now, Pizzica, there's not much to say about it. Uh, you can look at my five-star review of both, all, all of them, Pizzica, Melissa, and Eva, and decide how you want to play. Pizzica does everything. Her songs can do damage mitigation, healing, status removal. Her DPS song can double to quad damage if you get break plus double guaranteed damage. And she has kind of mixed songs in between. Not only that, she is a top level support for Pierce. She increases Pierce damage units by 60%. She increases crit damage for physical attacks by 60%. That's really, really, really hard to replace. So she'll fit in every team. You can put her in a team that's not even Pierce and you just use her songs to mitigate damage or double your damage and the rest of the team is going to blow everything out of the water. She's not there to attack, she's there to enable the rest of your team to win and win hard. Or to stall and win hard either way. Number one, fits in everything, almost all situations, nothing to say about her, that's bad. Now with Eva versus Melissa, it depends on your playstyle and what you really really want. So let me tell you what I think. Melissa is still a great unit, she is one or two flash strikes stance users. She is used differently than support of, uh, as a support than AS Hardy, which is more like a flash strike slash main DPS. Melissa enables your team to blow through things with like high end one or two turn AS, usually one turn AF, and then set up for a second turn uh, finish after an HP stopper. And the reason for that is she does everything. Speed up, physical resist down, wind and crystal resist down. She has um, break status if necessary. And she enables first turn AFs that charge longer because each hit charges 10% instead of the standard 7.5%. She can also mix and match. 
every hit from any type of team unit, whether or not it's magic, physical, any element, any weapon type, they all fit in Flash Drake's stance. And so you can mix and match, get the best out of any of your four top, three top units with Melissa and win the fight right there and then. Um, of course, after the first turn, her usefulness drops off a little bit, but if you play around with it, you probably can still win with a zone center on turn two afterwards, or the fact that you just tailored your team where the rest of your team will just win right after turn one. So Melissa is great for those early mid game fights where you just need that one turn AF blow everything out of the water. Now at the end game, like myself, you technically don't need Melissa. However, after that, we can start discussing advanced strats where you can use Melissa to enable your other teams to do things that no other unit can do. And so um, if you're looking for uh, like lowest turn first clears for global, Melissa is kind of what, what you need to do that. So keep that in mind if you want to play that way. AF, AFs all the way. Melissa, awesome, awesome, awesome. Eva, you know Eva. You've seen Eva. You've seen um, some YouTubers use solo Eva to clear things. You've seen Eva to carry an entire magic team. You've seen Eva with Lunatic quad hits with her crystal, quad hits with her everything. She's, she's amazing. Now you can argue she's situational. She only has two elements. She only has Lunatic and it fades after a few turns. But man, she can solo fights. I mean, that's all I can say. She can solo the twins. So she is high powered. She is new. She's going to last you way into the future um, if you want to use her. And although, like I said, she's not every element when she is needed, she's going to win super hard. So those are the top three units I would recommend going for if you don't have any. Now, quickly speaking, if you do have all three of those units, I would assume that you're somewhat into um, a moderate roster where you probably have a good selection of units, some of the newer units out there, like the altars, um, in which case you can look for, we recommend getting either zone setting units that you don't have that are extremely powerful or support units that will last into the future because support doesn't fade in usefulness nearly as quickly as DPS, which can replace um, you know, as they release more and more power crept units. So quickly speaking, in terms of zone units, Slash Zone, I don't recommend picking. You can get Slash Zone for free and Slash Zone Grass Death from Boss Rush. For Pierce, you have a free Pierce Zone Setter in AS Sheila. And again, I hope that you can farm for AS Foreign, which is still very viable nowadays with her heal and zone setting. And, um, but if you really want to draft a, a Pierce unit that uh, zone setting that you really, really need it for your team. ES Sukiya is probably the top choice I would recommend for Pierce. Finally, um, if you're going um, Magic Zone, well, Eva can already do Magic Zone if you really need to one. You also have Surge doing dual Magic Slash Zone, so you can substitute that way. And again, like I said earlier in the video, ES Chio can be farmed as a Magic Zone setter. Now, in terms of Elemental Zones, you got the Altars. Technically, if you want one of those, to help round out your elemental zone team, you can draft any of those four. Um, in terms of earth team, I would probably still say you can farm the AS Chio, so you really don't need that. And AS Miufa, I say, would be what a what, uh, standout zone setter. The reason why is she can side grade to normal Miufa. She has AS capability, which is, I would say, uh, in, in, it's, it, it, it's necessary. Your AS Miufa is necessary for a top line blunt team. So there's that. Um, otherwise, I mean, you just have to kind of decide after the zones in general, you know, you're probably going to have pulled most of some of these along your way unless you're really, really new to the game. And if you're really, really new to the game, you probably needed one of those first three I mentioned. Now, um, honorable mentions, Nakoko and uh, Red Clad Flame Mancer. Both of those adjust to all four elements and apparently the newest Thunder element can be utilized with Nakoko as well as Red Clad. And so they are very versatile. If you want a unit that kind of fits into multiple teams and thereby having either offensive support or just a lot of versatility, those will be great picks too. Okay, Gamer Dads talked way too long. So let me know in the comments below um, what you think about everything, how your summons are going, are you SDing anything? And for those who are summoning, I wish you all great luck. Put those thousand stones 
to great use. And I'll see you tomorrow when I start tackling the uh, Battle Simulator new fights. Uh, it's a little bit late here um, on the West Coast in Canada, and so I'll work on those tomorrow. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.